we have a lot to cover today. So my name is Kimberly Eason. I am the founder and the CEO of the Partnership for Gender Equity. We are a US-based, not-for-profit, women-led organization. We're based in Washington, DC. We were founded by the Coffee Quality Institute in 2015, and we're now an independent organization really focused on working within the coffee and the cocoa sectors to get everyone on a journey towards greater gender equity. Uh, and I'll share a little bit more about that in a minute. I do want to introduce my colleague, Greg Minahan. He will be co-master co of ceremonies here with me and uh, we'll be walking you through the tool, the virtual learning journey and some of the work that we've been doing with farmer organizations around the world. We're really excited to bring together both um, representatives of three farmer organizations. So we have uh, Maria Lisette Cubides from Co Central. We have Lilian Perez from um, uh, Sopexca in Nicaragua, and we have Neri Rafael Molina de Asobagri in Guatemala, and Co Central, of course, is from from Colombia. So we're thrilled to have uh, the three of you here. And then we have a couple of industry allies joining us. So thanks so much, Al Lu from Colectivo Coffee and John DeRocco from Mr. Espresso. We will also have a few words from Danielle Wood from uh, Duncan Brands, who he'll join us in a, in a little bit more. But essentially what we're gonna do, we're gonna try to keep it to 50 minutes. Um, we recognize everybody likes to have breaks before your next meeting. But um, here's what we're gonna do. Essentially set the stage for what this work is about, the virtual learning journey. We're gonna hear from our farmer organization partners. And then um, Greg's gonna talk with our industry allies. Uh, the three companies represented here have actually sponsored uh, organizations to participate in the virtual learning journeys. And so we wanna hear from them why, why gender equity is important and why they're invested in this work. And then of course, invite some questions and, uh, and, and respond to some of your questions given the, the time we have. And, and then look ahead, how, how do we all get on this journey towards greater gender equity? So um, one of the things that we recognize in our five years um, with the Partnership for Gender Equity is there is now a lot of interest and momentum in, in supporting work around the globe because companies and, and farmer organizations and all stakeholders along the, the supply chains are really recognizing that, that there is a role to play in terms, in terms of helping to drive greater gender equity across, across the sector. We see our role, there's a lot of great work that's already been happening. And as you hear, you will hear from the farmer organizations with us today, they've been on a gender equity journey and the virtual learning journey was one part of their, their continued journey towards greater gender equity. And um, our role, what we see is uh, to really help to, to sew together, to stitch together some of the efforts that are happening globally and create more of a conversation and shared language about gender equity in the global coffee and cocoa sectors. So just, I wanna give a little bit of background as where did this virtual learning journey come from? Well, back in March, 2020, of course, uh, COVID struck and we all had to really look at how do we innovate in our work? What we realized was that there was a big risk to gender equity and the work that had already been happening with gender equity in coffee and cocoa. There was a risk of that work backsliding and we wanted to still take action with regard to gender equity, even in this time of COVID and strengthen efforts at origin where women's voices were continuing to be marginalized and even, and even more um, difficult to, to access in, in times of COVID. We also recognize this opportunity for building more common definitions and understanding about the issue in the sector along the supply chain and really looking at, you know, how do we connect efforts? Um, there are customers, um, coffee buyers and, and investors that want to support this work. And so how can we help facilitate more collaboration with regards to, to gender equity in the supply chain? So, I think everyone is aware here that um, gender in agriculture is an incredibly complex system. And so if we look at this graphic, which we think depicts very well this, this level of complexity, oftentimes we see this complexity as a barrier for companies to take action because we're, we're speaking in, in, in about issues that maybe feel 
um, difficult to address, and they are certainly challenging and complex to address. Uh, but we don't we don't want that to be a barrier to action. And so one of the things that we're working on with the Partnership for Gender Equity is is helping to foster a shared language about gender equity across the sector. Yeah, and and I could make a point here too if you want to just back up there. Um, you know what? One of the things that we see uh, as we talk with roasters, suppliers, uh, even producer organizations is that when you talk about gender equity, the common understanding is really uh, women's ownership, women in positions of leadership, women um, uh, really helping to, really sitting at the table and, and helping to make decisions moving forward. And, and that's a vital aspect of gender equity development. But this diagram really does show you a deeper level of complexity and, and really the interaction between all of these different areas. Um, land rights, for instance, you know, once you begin to look at land rights, uh, there are, you know, customary land rights and statutory land rights, and, and both of those things impact one another. Decision making at the household level, at the producer group level, you can begin to see that each one of these domains, in some ways, has its own set of strategies, its own set of expertise and experts. Um, and its own uh, planning process that's required to make progress on this. So what we're doing is bringing this complex system and, and we're, we're expanding it from, from maybe a simple concept of gender equity as being uh, woman ownership or, or women leadership and expanding that to things like access to productive resources, like making sure that training is accessible to, um, uh, to women uh, equally to men and that it's appropriate to their needs and interests as well. Thanks, Greg. When we, um, so one of the ways that we're helping to connect the dots and create this common language um, is, is to create a sort of a framework. And this is something, this, uh, the five components of a gender equitable organization uh, form the basis of what we talk about with the farmer organizations in the virtual learning journey. These components form um, part of our online assessment, online um, producer organization assessment. And the idea is that these, these components actually for, serve as the, the backbone for how organizations can communicate internally about their work on gender equity, but also start to communicate externally. So if, if a buyer has a, has a question about, you know, what, is, what kind of work are you doing with regards to gender equity, that we can start to understand and share some of these terms and, and, and practices in a more structured way. So in terms of how the, how the virtual learning journey works, it's a 10 week online facilitated session. And what we do is we start with some reflection about, about these components of gender equity. We talk about perspectives, really understanding what is the experience of each of the farmer organizations in terms of um, the cultural context, the market opportunities, the challenges and the barriers that they're facing and what opportunities that, that they see. Um, you'll also hear, I think from our, um, the partners that are here today is that we have many groups that are brand new to gender equity and that have never really had a chance to, to consider what the importance of gender equity is for their farmer organization. And so by having more experienced farmer organizations like we have today, and ones that are newer on their journey, there's a real chance for this sharing of experience and sharing of, of learning in the facilitated dialogue sessions that we have. We use all of the, tool, the, the tools of Zoom, like the breakout, room, break, breakout rooms. Um, we have a shared WhatsApp uh, group. And so we also um, have homework assignments where, the, where we, ask, we ha ask the farm organization representatives to call a friend and share their perspectives across different countries. Um, what, uh, what, are they, what are they see as some of the biggest barriers and opportunities with regards to taking action on gender equity? And this is um, uh, something that's really, really interesting and, and, and unique, this experience sharing. Um, part of the virtual learning journey also includes planning and goal setting. 
Uh, so each of the pharma organizations receives their assessment and then they, they create an action plan based uh, on that assessment. And from that then the idea is that, that market partners can uh, take a look at the, their action plan and, and understand um, where might there be ways to invest in and engage with the pharma organization on their gender equity journey. And then, of course, um, recognition and acknowledgement. Um, so just to really highlight that this is a journey and, and the importance of each of the individuals and the work that they're doing, not only for their own learning, but then how do they go back and share it within their pharma organizations also is a critical element of this, this, this journey. So just to show you quickly, this is the, um, what, the, what the assessment looks like and the idea is it's not um it isn't um uh it's not a, a, a report like the sorry the um the priority isn't so much the score itself but it really is um the opportunity to learn about gender equity and to take action and to communicate about gender equity um given the recommendations that um that come forward through the tool and and also the the tool really does because everybody is at a slightly different starting point and some work has happened what we're finding broadly in the industry is that most people are at the beginning of their journey but there's quite a range of that beginning and and so what this helps us to do is to find the correct starting point for each producer organization and then build from wherever they are Great, so just here's a snapshot of, of the journey, the, the work that we do in conversations with the farmer organizations, then moving into the uh, taking the assessment and then building out their gender equity development plan. And then, um, then actually putting those plans and uh, together with a profile up on the um, Buyer Supplier Alliance. So this is a newly launched tool uh, we're still improving it, but we have a number of organizations from uh, the, the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, based on our project work that we've done over, over the past year in Democratic Republic of Congo. And then with the initial 25 pharma organizations that we worked with in the first virtual learning journey, which was uh, in part funded by the Lavazza Foundation and the and the safe platform of the Inter-American Development Bank, uh, we're starting to get the profiles of all of those groups also up onto the Buyer Supplier Alliance. You will see Co, Co Central is already there and so Pexca is already there. And I think we're about to get Aso Bagri up there and, and some others as well. So this is an opportunity for buyers to be able to come and to um, uh, seek out farmer organizations that are committed to gender equity and also find ways to understand what actions those farmer organizations are taking and potentially um, invest in partnership with those organizations. And, and also this, the Buyer Supplier Alliance is, a, is, a, is an innovation too that helps producer groups, um, it's sort of fuel to the fire of gender equity development. In other words, this is really where the rubber meets the road in terms of turning their gender equity work into market access, into economic returns. Uh, what we're saying broadly, what the industry has been saying is that organization that are on a gender equity journey, the copy that they produce is more valuable to us as roasters. Uh, we wanna be able to tell that story and, and we want to be able to um, uh, support those organizations on their journey. And so this market access does two things. It's also an incentive for producer groups to stay on that journey and continue to make progress on their goals as, as well as open the door to partnership with roasters who want to partner specifically within their own supply chains. Great, thanks Greg. Uh, so this is of course the, the important um, part of the, the acknowledgement and the celebration of course with every uh, course and workshop, it's important to uh, share a certificate with uh, the producer organization partners. And so you see we've got uh, Carolina from Mexico. We have some farmers from El Paraiso in Colombia and Peru and Costa Rica and cocoa farmers as well in Ecuador. And so um, this, the celebration of the work well done is also something that's critically important um, because it isn't, uh, it isn't an effort of one day, but it is an ongoing effort. And 
in the conversations with the farmer organizations, the very first opportunity, one of the things that we know is clear is that there are significant barriers to gender equity globally, not just in the coffee producing countries, but even here in the US. Um, and it really is you to, to be able to stand up and advocate for gender equity is something that that's challenging. And so this is um, often something that um, uh, the farmers say in terms of there's a, there's a lot of machismo, there is a lot of chauvinism, and how do we actually um, help to foster more gender equitable attitudes and and shifts in in cultures um, through this through this work? And it's through understanding shared language and supporting action uh, in uh, around the world on gender equity. And the, the truth of the matter is no one has it all figured out. So um, there is some good work happening and we're gonna hear about that in just a moment from the farmer organizations. And uh, we really do see PGE's role as one of bringing together different actors along the supply chain, helping folks to get on a gender e equity journey and to really be successful on that journey. We want to celebrate success and we want uh, to build strong collaborations. And the success sharing is, is really a key aspect of uh, Partnership for Gender Equity's media outreach with our social media channels and, and communications. It's really our objective to uh, to push these success stories out and, and also to give roasters the messaging to be able to um, also uh, promote and congratulate the successful accomplishments of the producer organizations within their supply chain that are on a gender equity journey as well. So the, the recognition, the market access, these are all uh, uh, key elements that helped to um, provide additional tools to producer organizations so that they can maintain the journey. Great, thanks Greg. So with that, I want to um, have a bit of a conversation with our producer organization partners and I'm gonna stop the screen sharing and uh, invite, make sure Lilium, Nady, Nady, you need to, would you turn on your camera? And um, Lilium, Nady and Maria Lisa. Okay, perfect, mm -hmm. great. Great, so we'll, we'll talk a few minutes with the farmer organization representatives and then we'll um, move into the industry conversation and then we'll get to your, your questions. So um, good morning, thank you all so much for, for being part of this. And um, so I'd love to just uh, maybe start with Lilium and um, ask Lilium to, would you introduce yourself and say, how long have you been working with Sopexca uh, and how long has Sopexca been working on, on gender equity? Eh, muy buenos días. Eh, mi nombre es Lilian Pérez. Trabajo en la parte sociocomunitaria de UCASO Pesca. Eh, UCASO Pesca es una organización cooperativista conformada de 650 productores. 30% eh, equivalen a, a mujeres. Eh, de, 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 desde su inicio, SO Pesca ha trabajado siempre en el sector rural y siempre ha venido fomentando la participación de la, de la mujer. Eh, en tomas de decisiones a nivel organizativo, eh, familiar y comunitario. Sopesca tiene 24 años de estar como cooperativa y eh, desde entonces pues viene eh, trabajando la parte de equidad de género. Pero eh, hasta el 2003, sí, 2003, eh, ya Sopesca cuenta con su política de género que es prácticamente pues este ha sido eh, la herramienta esencial para lograr este, todas las acciones que se han venido eh, dando pues, para la, eh, para la vis visibilización de la mujer en todo el trabajo productivo que, que hace pues, la pequeña productora. Eh, le, el tema de equidad de géneros eh, para un caso pesca es muy importante y esencial, ya que es la búsqueda de oportunidades para las mujeres pequeñas productoras organizadas y esto le ha venido permitiendo a tener acceso a tierra, financiamiento, condiciones en la parte de salud, educación y este, mejorar la parte de empoderamiento de las mujeres. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lilian. Gracias. Uh, María Lisette from Cocentral. 
how long have you been working in, in gender equity? How long have you been with Cocentral? And, to, and what's, your, what your, what's your role? Hola, buenos días para todos. Eh, mi nombre es María Alice Lozada. Trabajo hace cinco años con Cocentral. Desde el 2015, eh, tra, eh, la empresa trabaja con un grupo de mujeres asociadas a la cooperativa, en el cual se desarrolla eh, temas de capacitaciones, en énfasis en empoderamiento, liderazgo y productividad. Eh, esto ha llevado a... a llevar a nuestras mujeres a un reconocimiento internacional con el fin de resaltar la recompensa y contribución de las mujeres en la cadena de valor del café. Eh, nuestra cooperativa tiene 45 años desde sus inicios, eh, tiene 3,200 asociados, de los cuales 720 son mujeres. Esto equivale a un 23% eh, de asociadas. En el tema de género es muy importante eh, para nuestras asociadas y nuestras empleadas, ¿no? Eh, anteriormente ellas no eran capaces de dirigir algunos eh, roles o puestos de mayor rango. En la actualidad sí ya se da eso, tanto como para las empleadas como para las asociadas. Eh, ¿Qué se ha visto el impacto del desarrollo de género en este momento? Pues en mayor contexto, mayor interés en las mujeres. Las tienen más en cuenta en programas sociales. Eh, están siendo partícipes de escenarios importantes internacionales. Eh, en el momento hemos aumentado el número de vinculaciones en, en nuestra cooperativa. Pues, uno de los intereses de nuestra organización es eh, día a conocer el, todo lo que se aprendió mediante este taller de género a mis superiores y a mi grupo de, de, de compañeros de la unidad técnica y están muy interesados en, en administrar y eh, organizar un comité para promover y que certifique las políticas de género en nuestra cooperativa no, no nos excluyen de ninguna manera, pero en ningún momento son énfasis en eso. Entonces queremos cambiar esa ideología que hay en el momento. Thank you, María Lisette. Great. We'll get back with some more questions on that. Terrific. I want to introduce Neri, um, Rafael Molina from Asobagri. Neri, um, welcome and tell us a little bit about uh, Asobagri and your role at Asobagri. Muchas gracias. Mi nombre es Neri Rafael Molina. Tengo 13 años de laborar en la organización. Mi organización se llama Asociación Mariense de Agricultores Azoagri, ubicados en Huehuetenango, Guatemala. Tenemos 1,350 asociados, de los cuales 390 pues, son mujeres. Eso representa aproximadamente un 26% de toda la membresía. Un volumen de producción de 31,000 quintales de café oro exportable a Europa, Estados Unidos. Y de ese porcentaje de ventas, pues... Eh, Precisamente el 20% también es de mujeres. Estamos hablando del total de ventas de unos 6 o 7 millones aproximadamente de ingresos, de los cuales 2 millones son, eh, representan la economía para las mujeres. Ahí radica la importancia a lo largo de nuestros 30 años de funcionamiento, porque el trabajo eh, en la agricultura eh, siempre es un trabajo familiar. Nosotros hemos visto a lo largo de la historia de la organización cómo las mujeres y las familias se van involucrando en día a día. Se crea el programa en el año 2000, 2010. Estamos alrededor de 12 años de trabajar para el mal. Una de los obstáculos que hemos tenido, y bien lo decía Skimmer en el inicio, eh, una forma que trabajamos el tema de género, inclusión de mujeres, principalmente como una forma de poder captar eh, fondos, proyectos. Nosotros cometimos, no fue un error, sin embargo, estábamos cayendo en esa línea. Entonces, a partir del año 2010, se formaliza así de manera muy, muy puntual el programa de género, con su propia política, su propio programa de, de capacitación, de funcionamiento, con un presupuesto aproximado de, de unos, eh, ¿qué les digo? Más o menos como 100 mil dólares anualmente. 
nosotros siempre hemos creído que el asignarle presupuesto a los programas, esa es la raíz de, de, de la sostenibilidad. No podemos hablar de equidad de género si no les estamos asignando fondos. Eh, 390 son mujeres, un volumen de producción aproximado de, 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 de 7.000 quintales de café oro exportable. Estamos ubicados en Guatemala y estamos a las órdenes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nady. Um, I really appreciate that remark, and you made that also um, among the, the other farmer organizations about that you're really not committed to gender equity unless you can assign a, a, assign a budget to that. Funding is really critical in order uh, to help take action on, on gender equity. So um, it's an important point that the farmer organizations take note of that, not only have policies, um, what we know is that gender policies have been required of farmer organizations for a number of years in part because of certifications um, but but oftentimes those policies end up collecting dust on the shelves unless there's a champion within the organization or some kind of support from a development program or some kind of additional um, incentive or requirement from a development program or a buyer asking about it and so this really is a way that uh, the, the, the participation of the market and the development sector is key is to really work with these farmer organizations that might already have a gender policy and uh, and to help them with resources to be able to take action um, and put a plan in place and and make make real progress. And again, um, these organizations, as you've heard, have um, been on their journey and have already seen uh, some really important important results. So I want to um, ask you all a bit about your participation in the in the virtual learning journey and um, you know, maybe uh, share something that was, was a, a highlight or a new, something new that, that you learned or a perspective um, from, the, from the experience. So Lilian. Eh, eh, okay. Eh, bueno, todo el proceso, antes que todo, pues agradecer porque la organización fue incluida en, la, en el proceso de los talleres virtuales. Eh, la cual nos dejó herramientas eh, que han sido aplicadas dentro de la organización para transmitir esos conceptos de género eh, de una manera más asimilativa para los participantes, iniciando siempre la parte de los derechos humanos para hombres y mujeres. En este proceso, eh, los participantes lograron actuar y pensar eh, que las desigualdades de género no van a generar progreso ni para la familia ni personalmente. Eh, los cambios personales y colectivos eh, necesitamos que tengan ese enfoque, la parte de, de participantes, para transformar la vida de ellos. Entonces creo que eh, todo el proceso de los talleres virtuales, y más en este tiempo pues, que, que estamos en pandemia, eh, ha sido una manera eh, súper importante para seguir avanzando la equidad de género y no encontrar obstáculos. Thank you, Lilian. Maria Lisette, how about you? Eh, sí, eh, de, pues inicialmente agradecer a Mr. Espresso por, por haber pensado en nosotros y de verdad ha sido una experiencia maravillosa. Eh, nos ha brindado herramientas suficientes para poner en práctica, ¿no? Eh, algunas organizaciones no han tenido la misma oportunidad que nosotros y, y de verdad esa es una oportunidad valiosa porque pues se caracteriza por su accesibilidad y accesibilidad en medio de la pandemia y todo lo que estamos viviendo en, en el momento. Eh, esas herramientas aprendidas vamos a desarrollarlas con ayuda de todos en para implantarlas en nuestras mujeres y en la capacidad de nuestra organización, ¿no? Eh, la idea es poder cambiar el contexto y el pensamiento de, de muchas personas que todavía tenemos esa idea de, antigua, pero poner en, en práctica todo lo, lo aprendido. Thank you. Great. Uh, and Nady? How about you? What was your experience with the, uh, the, on, the virtual learning journey? 
Muchas gracias. El taller denominado Avances en la Equidad de Género en un Nuevo Tiempo se desarrolló en agosto y noviembre. Eh, nosotros pudimos aprender algo bastante relevante. Yo hice llevé esto a la Junta Directiva y a la Comisión de Género que tenemos. Que en Latinoamérica y los países que estamos en desarrollo tenemos un mismo problema, que no solo es exclusión, sino nadie le apuesta al tema de, de, de la equidad de género. Que todos padecemos de las mismas necesidades y problemas. Eh, una de las acciones que, que nosotros logramos aprender del taller ha sido eh, conocer esas experiencias, porque también hay casos bastante exitosos en otras organizaciones y nosotros hemos eh, sabido absorber esa parte para luego darle vida a nuestro programa. A pesar de que habemos más de 23 organizaciones en Guatemala que pertenecemos al sistema de comercio justo organizado, también a nivel Latinoamérica hay más de 800 organizaciones que están dentro del mismo movimiento Pueden haber políticas nacionales, eh, gubernamentales que no funcionan. Sin embargo, la vida o el tema de la equidad de género radica desde las propias comunidades. Pensamos que ahí está el corazón. Ahí es donde el, el gobierno, los cooperantes tienen que invertir. Tiene que ser una inversión de manera directa. El taller fue bastante productivo. Eso nos permitió a nosotros reformar los estatutos por tercera vez. Dentro de los estatutos hemos dejado un eje principal que es el componente equidad de género. Eso nos permite tener un presupuesto, nos permite, nos permite tener una comisión, nos permite darle vida a nuestra política de género y nos permite principalmente desarrollar anualmente una asamblea puramente de mujeres para abordar temas estratégicos. Eh, nosotros, eh, es una experiencia que yo les quiero contar, es reciente y eso también surge a raíz de, de esta nueva normalidad que, que nos aqueja por la, por la pandemia. También es muy interesante rescatar el compromiso de los tostadores de los aliados de la otra parte del mundo, que ellos también están interesados en poder invertir y desarrollar eh, esa parte que nos hace falta. Principalmente países como, como les repito, Latinoamérica, que la cultura es totalmente diferente. Estamos luchando contra diferentes formas de pensar de los hombres principalmente. Yo tuve más de 10 años a cargo el, el, el componente de género. A pesar de ser hombre, yo siempre he entendido que también las mujeres son un pilar, pilar fundamental para el desarrollo social y económico de, nuestros, de nuestras comunidades. Thank you so much, Neri. Um, and building on your uh, call to the to the roasters in terms of the kind of partnership that you can have, I'd love also to hear from Maria Lisette and Lilium. From your point of view, what what can be the role of the industry? Obviously, it's um, it's a big effort that you're making um, to to uh, advance gender equity in your organizations. What what would you invite the industry uh, to do? Ok, eh, bueno, el papel principal de la industria sería visibilizar el café producido por mujeres en mercado de café de especialidad, reconocer económicamente el esfuerzo que las mujeres realizan para subsistir en el ámbito de pobreza y eh, la sostenibilidad de la tierra. Eh, la producción de café beneficiosa para el medio ambiente y la estabilidad de las familias rurales, especialmente la tierra que está administrada por mujeres. Eh, es aquí donde entra el papel de la, de, de la industria, reconocer económicamente el producto de manera eh, trazable, comprobable y donde se ubiquen avances en términos de empoderamiento de las mujeres en sus propias decisiones y acciones. Una mirada al empoderamiento económico de las mujeres desde una perspectiva de género este, permitirá comprender que solo es posible avanzar a la equidad de género si se logra aumentar la posibilidad de nuevas iniciativas de diversificación en la finca de las mujeres. Y esto, por ende, va a aumentar la economía de las mujeres y mejorar el bienestar familiar. Great. Thank you, Lilian. María Lisa, what would you ask from the roasters? <risa> eh, mayor compromiso que nos puedan liderar para, o sea, la idea es que a pesar de que nos compren nuestro café y el café de estas mujeres, no es solamente café de ellas, sino que viene de un grupo de familia que está tratando de salir adelante eh, con todos los obstáculos que, que pueden encontrarse mediante esta industria que es inmensamente grande y ustedes lo conocen mejor que nosotros. Eh, también eh, pues la colaboración ¿no? eh, de efectivo para, para poder elaborar programas sociales que garanticen una equidad con mayor eh, equidad, promover las capacitaciones con ellas en temas de fortalecer la igualdad entre personas, 
relaciones más equitativas en crecimiento personal, aumentando el liderazgo eh, y la toma de decisiones, ¿no? Eh, de esta manera, pues, divulgar esta información y todo lo que se está creando para que tanto la industria como la organización presente y todo este grupo de, de personas que, que están liderando es, esta campaña de, de, de género eh, quede abierto ante el mundo y abramos más puertas para que esta eh, problemática no se vea, más bien cambiemos el contexto uh -huh. para llegar a un futuro mejor de estas familias que son cabezas de hogar, una mujer, entonces pues la idea es poder contar con esto a un futuro y que ellas puedan lograr eh, mayor beneficio para sus familias. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Such a, such a clear message that, that gender equity really is the foundation for Um, well-being of families and communities globally and when we can work in partnership together we can advance together uh, and really um, make sure that that families are healthy and thriving through a more equitable way of working together so I want to just thank the three of you um, well we may have some questions for you from the the attendees so um, well we can get to those But what we're going to turn to now is a conversation with our three uh, industry representatives. So I want to thank um, Danielle Woods from Duncan Brands, Al Lu from Colectivo Coffee, and John DeRocco from Mr. Espresso, who, as you, as you heard, John uh, sponsored from Mr. Espresso, sponsored um, Co Central Colectivo Coffee, also um, sponsored Comsa, uh, a group in Honduras. And um, Danielle, we're really excited, um, uh, selected um, to work with the Partnership for Gender Equity in our second uh, virtual learning journey that is funded entirely by, by Dunkin' Donuts. And so now we have a new cohort of groups that just started two weeks ago. We have our second session today with those groups. Um, there are 14 groups from Guatemala and Colombia who are now participating and gaining this uh, same experience that Lilian Neri and, and Maria Lisette spoke about. So Greg, I'm gonna turn it over to you with our industry guests and, and thanks uh, for, to everyone for being here. Thank you. Yeah, so this, this portion here, um, you know, what, what we're seeing clearly is that, you know, the, the economic, the, 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 the environmental, the social benefits of gender equity development are vast. And uh, there's, there's not an aspect of coffee production that isn't impacted by women. Um, and I think that's an important thing that, that the people, the, the industry representatives that we have here today, Al, John, and, and Danielle, all realized and, and acknowledge that actually all coffee is women's coffee. Uh, we've got a hidden workforce, very uh, a, a hidden significant workforce in coffee, and what we're doing is uh, building the capacity of that workforce and and really mining the gold uh, that lies uh, uh, untapped there. So, um, from from uh, from an organization that wants to support this work and get involved in this work, um, I, I'd I'd like to you know, ask you what aspects of this program um, were attractive to you? Um, aspects that may, you know, around affordability, aspects around accessibility for us being able to work uh, flexibly within multiple supply chains, um, and, and, and even perhaps uh, uh, um, your thoughts about the impact of this work. And, and Al, maybe uh, uh, we could go to you first and, and, and hear, hear your perspective on that. All right, uh, thanks, Greg. Thanks, Kimberly. Uh, my name is Al Liu. I'm the Vice President of Coffee at Colectivo Coffee Roasters uh, based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And we have uh, 20 cafes in the Milwaukee area as well as in uh, our state capital, Madison, and uh, in Chicago as well. Uh, we are um, admittedly a little bit late to the uh, table in terms of even sourcing women-produced coffees. That's something we started doing about four years ago. 
Um, and I didn't really know if there was any opportunity beyond that to, to work on uh, gender equity related issues. And I had already known of uh, PGE, um, but the virtual learning journey really provided us with a, a very accessible and easy opportunity to, to participate at a higher level at a very, um, just by nominating Comsa, which is a well-known fair trade cooperative in Marcala, uh, Honduras, um, a co-op that we buy a fair amount of coffee from, and one that I know um, quite well, dating back to my, my days as an importer, uh, working for an importer in Seattle. And so it was rather simple because the, um, due to, uh, thanks to the um, funding provided by um, the SAFE initiative of the Inter-American Development Bank, um, basically all we just did was say, hey, we would like to nominate COMSA for this. And if they're interested, um, we'd like to be a part of it with them. And so um, that was like a very easy no brainer. And uh, we now are working on um, sponsoring them for their second phase of the virtual learning journey. So from my um, perspective, this has been a really simple, uh, for lack of a better word, process that has allowed us to address an issue that we didn't know a lot about, didn't have a lot of experience in, but definitely wanted to um, engage in at a higher level. Well, thanks, Al. And I think that's really important to note that, um, you know, the, just the level of understanding, we, we had that slide initially about the com this complex system called gender. Um, and, and what we're seeing is that really um, on both sides uh, of the buyer supplier table uh, that we're moving really hand in hand with gender equity development. Um, and and uh, it's, it's not as if the, the North or, has any great lead uh, in terms of their work um, uh, at origin. So, so your points there about really being able to sort of uh, learn about gender equity in real time as you help to develop capacity within your supply chain, I, I think is, is a really uh, interesting point. Um, let's see, uh, uh, Danielle. Um, uh, you, uh, you're part of our second cohort, and, uh, and, and I'd just like to hear some of your thoughts about just from, from Duncan's perspective on gender and, and why the virtual learning journey was an appealing strategy for you. Sure. Thanks, Greg, and thanks for having me today. Um, so for those of you that, that don't know me, I'm Danielle Wood, and I uh, manage our social impact efforts at Inspire Brands, um, the, the parent company of Duncan. So we were recently acquired, um, and I focus on all of our sustainability efforts and initiatives across our entire portfolio. Um, what was most interesting to us, and I, I want to piggyback off of what Al said, was you know we really weren't sure where to start within gender equity. We knew there was an opportunity area, and similarly, we were you know late to the game um, to to really invest in gender equity, especially when we're looking at other brands who have done some really great work in this space. Um, and so, what I really like about the virtual learning journey, and of course the partnership with PGE, is the ease of and accessibility of the program. For us, our team is fairly small at Duncan for sustainability. And so we don't have enough hands on the ground to, to do the, the type of work we're looking to do and to have that impact. But with the virtual learning journey, we were, you know, we are able to have a larger impact. Um, and I think, you know, it's it's very affordable, very accessible, um, and it just helps our team out advancing gender equity where we might not have, you know, the headcounts available to make those impacts on the ground. And for our partnership with PGE and the virtual learning journey, we're investing directly within our supply chains. As Greg mentioned, you know, women touch every aspect of, of the coffee value chain. Um, but it's also important to us to tell that story to families, to men, um, everyone in, in the broad spectrum and really advancing gender equity. So not only just focusing on, um, you know, women-owned coffee, but 
sharing that story and, and sharing those obstacles, I think is important for everyone to understand. And that's something um, we feel is very important at Duncan and some and a message we want to also discuss internally. So that's also an important message we're promoting within our organization um, as part of our overall diversity and inclusion strategy. So not only focusing on supplier diversity and diversity within our team members, but also ad advancing gender equity uh, throughout all levels of the, the supply chain. So I would say, you know, it's it's been very successful for us so far, and I have um, really enjoyed what we've been getting out of it and the true impact we're having um, with with PG and the virtual learning journey. Thanks. You know, I, I, I um, it's just one of the one of the benefits that I'm seeing from the producer side is that this is actually giving uh, from the from the supplier uh, from the buyer side is that that the process is also providing you a narrative and providing you the language for being able to talk about this uh, in a way that's, uh, that's very accessible uh, to, to both uh, uh, direct customers, but, but that internal audience, which is uh, just as important. So John, I'd like to, I'd like to go to you um, uh, and, uh, and also hear, and hear your thoughts about that as well. Okay. Yeah, I apologize. I don't think my camera is 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 working. So, <laughs> um, but it's, I mean, it's working, but it's not syncing with Zoom. So for some reason. So. But um, yeah, my name is John. I'm with Mr. Espresso in Oakland, California. Uh, we're a family-owned coffee roaster that uh, services mainly the, the food service industry and in, uh, and mainly in the in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, we've been in business for over 40 years, and uh, it, was, it was founded by my father. And uh, as I mentioned, we're we're a family-run business, so the entire family participates in the in the operation of the company. Um, I first became aware of um, the partnership for gender equity was when I, on, on a trip to Myanmar about four years ago, and uh, we were walked through an exercise that was um, that they had participated in. Um, Due to Kimberly's work and the work that the uh, CQI had done there, and um, we, you know, it was it, it was an interactive exercise where we kind of we talked about our dreams and we drew we, I mean, we drew uh, photographs and it was it was a very powerful exercise and so uh, so I, I, I realized that that, that was uh, how it could be really important work for the people who, who participated in, in it in, in the coffee producing countries. Um, so it's it's important for us as as you know specialty coffee companies that not only is is the coffee good but the coffee has to come from a good place. So um, you know we believe that uh, everybody has value. You know everybody everyone should be respected, and um, that we also believe that when people work together, you know when we include more people, that um, it makes every, every you know that when everyone feels respected, everyone feels heard, that um, things just work better in general. So, um, so yeah, it's been an important part of our, of our, of, of our journey. And we, we look forward to, 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 to keep moving forward with it, with, with you know, with this process. So. You know, one of the um, comments that we do hear um, from buyers is that if they're beginning to explore and look for new cooperatives to partner with, that if that cooperative is actually working on gender equity, that this is a, this is a, a very strong signal that there's a high level of organization and professionalism within the organization. It's a, it's a nice heuristic that, um, uh, that, that business dealings uh, with this organization will be conducted in, 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 a, uh, in a very professional and, and efficient manner. Um, um, it, the, just for, for everybody that's here to give you a, a, a sense of the, the, the cost for being involved in this, um, generally speaking, a, a virtual learning journey, which we can pretty much conduct uh, any place that we can have an internet connection. Um, they run typically between uh, $2,500 and $3,200 per producer group, uh, depending on, on the situation and, and, and maybe the, the cohort, the number that we're doing. Um, and, um, and one of the key outputs of this process is that 
buyer supplier alliance and and the buyer supplier alliance puts these gender equity action plans online for roasters to partner with and so i, I want to hear just one more uh, uh comment and, and i'm going to open this up to the panel we can only take one more comment um but being able to so once the virtual learning journey takes place um, how do you feel about that ability to sort of continue to support these cooperatives on their journey with with further and more specific targeted partnership opportunities? Greg, who's taking this question? Al, oh, Al, go ahead, yeah, please. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, uh, geez. You know, this is um, just having the opportunity to continue uh, supporting COMSA uh, with the second phase of the virtual learning journey. Um, we are setting up a pass through uh, sponsorship with the green coffee importer that's bringing the coffee in for us from COMSA. Um, so this is Sukafina, uh, North America. And um, so I've been in conversation with them about uh, just adding a couple of cents to, to um, our purchase of green coffee from Comsa, and then that money is actually fronted, um, ideally, if this works out, to um, PGE. And that way, um, the funds can be provided upfront, and then we essentially pay back through um, the invoices that we pay for the green coffee. So this is a very simple um, uh, way to continue our involvement in this program in this initiative. And, um, you know, one thing I do want to say is that just over the past year, um, there's been a huge movement in the US um, among companies to address diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, what we, um, what people are calling DEI. And I think for uh, coffee roasters, specialty roasters, um, you know, we, we definitely all should be looking at that issue within our own organizations, but also down um, our supply chains. And, and I think what the virtual learning journey does is um, provide us with a platform to, um, to be connected to one of our suppliers, a uh, co-op that we buy a fair amount of coffee from, and to help them with their DEI initiatives. Um, and, and I think that's, um, that's an important thing for, uh, especially now to consider is that um, working on this issue isn't just within our organization, it's with our, with a supply chain, not all of our supply chains, but with one of them at least. Excellent. Thank you, Al. So I, I want to encourage everybody that's attending this uh, to reach out. I put uh, my email and Kimberly's email in the chat um, uh, to contact us directly. Uh, really, if if this is at all interesting to anybody uh, on the call, um, what we would do as a next step is set up an exploratory conversation um, and, and answer any specific questions that you might have uh, and talk about timelines, opportunities, uh, number of, of producer co-ops uh, uh, that uh, you were interested in supporting and, and, and these kinds of details like that. Um, we are kind of close to the top of the hour. Uh, Kimberly, uh, do you, do you, do you want to open up to some questions or? I think we're going to have to wrap so people can go on with their days. We can wrap the official part. Um, and if anybody wants to stay on, Greg and I and whoever can from the panelists, we could stay on a few minutes. But I think just to honor people's time and our commitment to that, we we that we that wanted to be even less than an hour so you could get onto your days. But I, I, so I do wanna thank everyone. I wanna we'll close by really a sincere expression of, of gratitude to all of you, the panelists, um, for not only participating today and sharing your time in, in busy days where you have a lot of priorities, but also being committed to this work, to your investment in these farmer organizations and beyond. Um, so many rich comments uh, and perspectives that were shared in this past hour. And I wanna uh, highlight in particular what, what John uh, DiRocco from Mr. Espresso said is, it is so true and something that we're committed to that everyone along the coffee and cocoa supply chains, everyone globally, everyone has value. 
everyone deserves to be respected and heard. And we know that there are so many marginalized voices in the coffee sector, in the cocoa sector. And in particular, those are the voices of women. And in these times of COVID, we know that there has been backsliding on gender equity. And we really, we just cannot let that happen on our watch. So this virtual learning journey is one tool that working virtually, we can still advance gender equity and still make the difference for farming families around the world. Things really do work better. John, I didn't know that you had had that experience in Myanmar with those that exercise that really is inspiring and moving to me that that's something that has stuck with you. Um, things do work better when there's conversations about the things that matter and the things that matter are the things that come from the heart and the, uh, the experience and the wisdom of the people in the supply chain. So let's step back, figure out how we can all engage in this journey towards greater gender equity, greater inclusion globally. Um, and we're here, we are as the Partnership for Gender Equity, your partner in making you be successful and helping uh, everyone to be successful by sharing tools like the virtual learning journey and also support to help everyone um, on their, their uh, journey towards greater gender equity. We do believe that we can reach the sustainable development goal five um, in the coffee sector. And so we wanna stand up with all of you, all of our partners by 2030 at the very latest, we're hoping more like 2025 to be able to really demonstrate the impact that we can have when we collaborate on this important issue of gender equity. So um, thank you really from the bottom of my heart for all of you that took time, all of the attendees from all over the uh, several different countries here. Um, and we look forward to being in touch. As Greg said, you know, please reach out by email, set up a time to talk. And um, again, just thank you so much for, uh, for being here and being part of this journey with us.